Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you my novel, His Christmas Eve Proposal, Book Three in the Medicine Women of Alaska, Chapter Eight. Never before in his life had Drew behaved in such an aggressively flirtatious manner. It went against his nature, but there was something to Naomi Schuster that drew him to her. Ever since Danielle left him, he'd been afraid of dating. It'd been so much easier to just lie back and focus on his career and not on women. He didn't want to feel that raw, that broken ever again. For the past several years, he'd managed fine, or so he thought. It wasn't until he met the pretty, feisty little trauma surgeon that he realized she'd ignited a passion in his heart that he'd not experienced in a long time. She pulled invisible strings of longing from him. His desire for her was so powerful it frightened him. Only, did she understand what a huge leap of faith this was for him? Did she have the slightest clue? After Danielle left, he'd never invited a woman out to his cabin. She finished her shopping and paid for her items, along with the loaf of bread that he'd so playfully tossed into the cart. On their way out of the grocery store, she glanced over at him apprehensively. If you're not too happy about going out tonight, I can always take a rain check. No, no, not at all, he assured her. Even while inwardly he couldn't help agreeing, he was setting himself up for hurt. Are you sure you don't want to reschedule? I'm positive. I'm just thinking about one of my patients. Okay, oh, Mrs. Armacost? Yes, he said. She furrowed her brow. I understand she's been a patient of yours for years and your dad treated her back in the day. I do understand how hard it is to let go of patients or to lose them. Something in her manner intrigued him. Had she ever lost one of her patients? He had to assume that the answer to this question was an unequivocal yes. Of course she'd lost a patient or two. No wonder she was so upset. Had she recently lost a patient, though, and was that death of the patient still haunting her? Doctors lost their patients. This was a fact. And then it hit him with the force of a thunderbolt. She'd recently lost a patient of hers on the operating table. Have you ever lost a patient, he asked, as kindly as he could manage. The fact that she stiffened instantly told him that indeed she had, and recently too. Why are you asking me that, she asked, suddenly defensive. I don't know, he said. It's just that you suddenly looked kind of sad, and I was wondering. I did lose a patient, she said sharply. Yes, you're right. It was very painful, and I don't want to discuss it. Fair enough. Only, how could he get to know her if she remained closed off to him? Well... He supposed he could focus on finding out why a family physician, which was what she claimed to be, could simply walk into an operating room and conduct herself with skill and precision, behaving like a highly skilled cardiothoracic surgeon. She was a skilled surgeon, just as Danielle had been, and the way she'd conducted herself that night in the makeshift operating room had convinced him that she was cut from a similar cloth. 
She was driven, ambitious, and passionate about her calling. She didn't utter another word as they rode back to Gnome Town in a stultifying silence. Drew pulled his truck up to the entrance of her medical practice. I'm setting myself up for heartache. And yet he felt helpless to stop. She climbed out of the truck, grabbed her two bags of groceries, and with the door still open and against her back, gazed up at him. Okay, so you're picking me up at seven? Does seven work for you? It does. She smiled, and it was the most happy, cheerful smile he'd seen. His heart shuddered. Was it too late to break the date, pretend he had a sudden engagement? He could see it all now. He'd fall in love with her, and by the time she decided that she was really meant to pursue her passion of cardiothoracic surgery and leave Gnome Town, it'd be too late, and he'd suffer yet another broken heart. Did he really want that kind of heartache? I'll see you at seven, she said. See you at seven. She pushed the door shut with her hip and walked into her medical practice, leaving him wondering what in the world was he thinking. When Danielle left him, he'd vowed that he'd never let someone into his heart ever again. He'd grown comfortable in his place in the world. He'd worked hard. Heck, he was something of a workaholic, not really paying attention to the traditional deadlines by which people with families structured their lives. It worked for a while. And yet, with every passing year, he grew lonelier and lonely.